In Schaefer Nuggets number four, I provided a link to this video where I want to talk about Cocaius a little bit and his formulation of covenant theology. I'm going to lay a bar across the bottom of the screen, and this will represent the history of the Christian church. So I'm going to mark the left with Pentecost in 30 AD, and a little illustration there. And I'm going to mark the other end with 2016. Now you see how the bar fades out in the middle? That's because we lost some truth during that time. And it's a terrible thing, but it's true. And I'm going to mark that time as approximately 500 AD to 1500 AD. And it's the domination of the Roman Catholic Church. And it corresponds with the Dark Ages somewhat. Now I'm going to mark the restoration of some truth with Martin Luther here at 1517. But the bar is still somewhat transparent. And I did that on purpose. Now, after this time, Johannes Cocaius this is when covenant theology was systematized. And then, John Darby in 1830, we have the systematizing of dispensational theology. Now, it's only possible that these systematized theologies would emerge after the Reformation. And as you can see, Covenant theology is not all that much older than dispensational theology. And so when you hear covenant theologians trying to claim that they hold the grand old view and things like this, it's an exaggeration, okay? And I want to give this example to you from R.C. Sproul. This article is linked in the description. And he says the following. Covenant theology is important for many reasons. Though covenant theology has been around for millennia, it finds its more refined and systematic formulation in the Protestant Reformation. Its importance, however, has been heightened in our day because of its relationship to a theology that is relatively new. In the late 19th century, the theology called dispensationalism emerged as a new approach to understanding the Bible. Now here Sproul says that covenant theology has been around for millennia. It has not been around for millennia. What R.C. Sproul means here is that certain elements of their view are found in ancient times. For example, amillennialism, a sort of replacement theology, this morphed Israel concept they teach, and so forth. But that doesn't make them covenant theologians, and nothing there is taught concerning their theological covenants. On the other hand, we have Justin, Irenaeus, and Hippolytus, who were teaching futurist premillennialism, they distinguished between the church and Israel. They taught four dispensations from the fall to the coming of the kingdom. They interpreted prophecy literally, and on and on it goes. When you read them, they sound like dispensationalists. I've been quoting them on my channel here. You know, it's remarkable. Sproul says, it finds its more refined and systematic formulation in the Protestant Reformation. I would say through Cocaius in the 17th century. This is where covenant theology was systematized. Now yes, concepts that were brought into it existed before then, but it was systematized in the 17th century. And this isn't very long before John Darby. And I would just ask Sproul and others here, let's see, if we are finding elements of our view in ancient times, then does this mean they held our view? I mean, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Hippolytus, and others, they were futurist, premillennialists, they distinguished between Israel and the church, and so forth. 
they didn't hold anything remotely resembling this Gnostic bull crap that these people are teaching over in Reformville. And then you'll notice that R.C. Sproul calls our view relatively new. So he wants to apply one standard to his and say it's been around for millennia. It most certainly has not. But dispensationalism, no, we're going to demand that you consider that one from the time of its systematizing in 1830. These men that behave like this, it's a very obvious double standard. I know that they know that they do this. They're hoping that their readers won't notice, won't catch on. This all reeks of dishonesty.